Good morning and welcome to Genesis Church Online. We're so thankful that you decided to join us this morning. We're really, since we're online, whenever you're watching this. So we invite you to, you know, wherever you are, stand to your feet and, uh, or sit in your chair or your couch and, and join us this morning in worship. In this place, I 
secret place, for that place to come and just be with you, to be consumed by all that you are. 
Lord, I pray that you would rekindle that fire in us to, to find you in that secret place. And for those who have never been there, Lord God, that you would teach us to carve out that time for you and only you to just be with you and how that can change our day, our outlook, our future. Thank you, Father. Lord, this morning, I just pray that you would be with each and every person. Lord, that's part of this online campus. Father, that you just open up our eyes and our ears for all that you have for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Steve, and uh, to our band. And good morning, and welcome to you wherever you are joining us from this morning. Uh, as part of our Genesis Church family, which extends across this country and uh, into other countries too. And uh, one of the wonderful things that has happened over the past few months is so many friends have got to know us and have become part of us here at Genesis. And uh, we're glad you're worshiping with us here this Sunday morning. Let me also say that we appreciate the fact that um, so many of you, having recognized, recognizing this is your church family, that you are committed to directing your giving to our church and uh, whichever way you're able to do it. A lot more people now are giving online because it's quick and it's easy. And uh, if that's the way you give, we appreciate it. You can do it at our website, genesisli.com. Um, texting to me is the simplest way. And you can text it, your gift to the number on the screen. And uh, you can also write a check. How quaint. How novel, uh, but you can. They still work, folks. So you can write a check, made it out to Genesis Church, and mail it to us at the address that's on your screen just now, Genesis Church, 28A Industrial Boulevard, Medford, New York, 11763. So uh, we love you being with us. If you want to keep in touch with more of what's happening around here, you can actually go to the Bible app if you hit more uh, at the bottom of the home screen, it'll open a page that will bring up our church. You can actually follow through the outline and the notes and the Bible verses for today's teaching and any Sunday's teaching there, and it keeps you up to date with what we're doing. Tuesday night, again this week, we are inviting all who want to do it from wherever you are. And the beauty of our online activities is literally from wherever you are. You don't have to physically be able to come to our church building, but we're going to invite you to join us for the second of what we call our Tuesday chat. And our Tuesday chat runs just like this. Uh, we're sending out again, it's the same link actually as last week, but tomorrow we're going to send out to everybody on our mailing list we will send you a Zoom link, and we're inviting you to join us for a Zoom get-together from 7 to 7.45 tomorrow evening, Tuesday evening, try, on Tuesday night, and we're going to just talk about what God's been doing in our lives and sharing stories of God's goodness and God's grace, and uh, we'll share something from God's Word too. So that's Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. If you're not on our email list um, you can just shoot us a note at admin at genesisli.com. Say, please add me to the mailing list. Or you can go to our website, genesisli.com, hit the connect button, and you can give us your details directly through the website. So anyway, you wish to do it, we're able to stay connected. So let's pray, and then we're going to come to today's teaching. Father, we just pause, breathe, and invite you in these moments. Will you speak to our hearts through what is shared, we pray. God, help me as the speaker and help each one listening. God, that your word today might accomplish the purpose that you plan for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we're in the third week now of a teaching series called My Journey. Um, next Sunday marks exactly actually to the date, 50 years since I started pastoring. 
July the 26th of 1970 was my first Sunday morning as a pastor. And uh, next Sunday is July 26th, so 50 years later. And what I've been doing the last couple of weeks is just relating some of my journey through those years and drawing lessons from it and seeing how I've learned, I grew, and basically what God has been saying to me and what we can bring from God's Word to help us through my experience. Today, I I kind of entitled today's teaching, Practicing Patience. Now, I say practicing because most of us aren't any good at it, right? So we're still practicing patience. Uh, And the next part of my journey was a time of doing just that. Sometimes folks, often folks say to me, so how did you come to be on Long Island? And that's a good question because 40 years ago, I never knew Long Island existed. Please don't take it personally. But if you live in the UK, when people say New York, you picture Manhattan and you think that's New York. So I had no idea whatever. Last year, last week, I I talked about the 15 eventful wonderful and challenging years that we had in Scotland, a place I still absolutely love. In fact, I've told my family, when God eventually takes me home, I want you to uh, cremate me and take my ashes to the shore there in Scotland by where we lived and scatter my ashes on the the shore in Scotland. I love that place. I really do. So how did I get from there to here? Well, it was the February of 1984. February of 1984, I got a phone call one afternoon from a friend of mine who was from Scotland but lived in the States, Robert Cameron. And Robert called me and said, my pastor wants to talk to you. I had no idea who his pastor was. So this guy comes on the phone and says, hey, Roger, my name's Wally. Uh, my wife Gwen visited your church last summer and like couldn't stop talking about you. And I've got a pastor's conference coming up in April. We've got about 400 pastors coming. And I wonder if you'd come and speak for us at the pastor's conference. And I'm like, wow, I get to go to the United States of America. Never been there. I'm in the back end of beyond in the north of Scotland. So I said, I'll give that prayerful consideration and let you know. No, I didn't. I said, really? <laughs> yeah, I'll come. <laughs> he said, great, we'll send you, we'll send you tickets. And, and then they, sent, they, they made all the flight arrangements. And in April of that year, I came over to the United States for the very first time, went down to Virginia Beach and um, spent a fantastic time with a man who became such a good friend, Wally Odom. And, um, and I, I preached for Wally at his... Um, at his pastor's conference that year. And and to my great surprise, he invited me back the next year. And and the next year I'm at Wally's conference and, you know, I'd met a number of the pastors and there was a pastor that I met there from Long Island who pastored a substantial church on the island. And we got acquainted and we hit it off. Actually, he came over and visited us in Scotland and he said, next time you're over, I want you to come and preach for me. And I did. So I came to Long Island for the first time in 1986. And Wally kept asking me back for his pastor's conference. And when I was here, I would go and I, because other pastors I'd met at the conference had come preach for me. I, I visited quite a number of different states and different churches, but I'd always be in Long Island about once a year at the church that I had been to before. And then the pastor of that church asked me in the summer of 1990 to come over for a month and look after the church because he wanted to take a break and really just pray about the future. And I came over, I looked after the church, our whole family came, we had a great time here, and I looked after the church, and then uh, when I was back in the UK and he had come back home, he called me and said, I really think the time has come for me to move on. I'd like, will you pray about coming over and taking on the leadership of this church? And I said, Uh, okay, this one I did say, let me pray about this. And uh, I shared it with Jill, and then our children at that time um, 
I guess at that point we're somewhere um, around Charlotte was um, Charlotte was uh, about to start her sophomore year at college. Jonathan was about to go into his senior year at high school. And so we told the kids, you know, we said, look, we've, we've been asked to actually move to Long Island. And they both said, that's great. We're not coming. <laughs> Which kind of puts a whole new pressure on you, doesn't it? It really does. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm trying to kind of get at my, 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 a, a, a grip on what does God want me to do? And then I'm thinking if we do that, our kids aren't going to be, we're going to kind of lose our kids. They'll be over 3,000 miles away. And I don't know what to do. And that was a very, very difficult number of months. And the thing that I've drawn from that, that I just want to just throw out to you today is this. You should always listen for God. I didn't say to God because that's a given, right? But you should always listen for God. When you don't know what to do and which way to turn, you should always listen for God. Psalm 37 and verse 23 says this, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. God's got a plan for every single one of us. Our steps are ordered. In other words, that suggests to me ahead of time, God's got our pathway prepared for us. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says this, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So there's the suggestion that when we're making a decision of which pathway to take, we need to listen to the voice that says this way. We should always listen for God. Because tragedies occur in people's lives when they make decisions without consulting or even ignoring what God has to say about it. And over and over again, I've seen lives wrecked by people saying, well, I know, I, I know this, but. I know that, but. Always listen for God. So, but what do you do when you're not hearing that voice behind you? It's like, okay, God, do I go to the United States or don't I? And, and uh, I'm waiting for this is the way walk in it, but I'm not hearing it. What do you do? Well, here's a little bit of um, driving etiquette. If the light isn't green, stay where you are. I learned that. I learned that the hard way. Because I paid another fine a couple of days ago for a red light ticket. If the light isn't green... (laughs) Stay where you are. I, I know. I know. At one time, um, I, w- I was trying to work out a, d- a decision that I was making uh, during the time I was pastoring in Scotland, and I wasn't sure what to do. And I, I asked a, a, a good friend of mine, John Strachan, who pastored in the nearby town. I said, "John, I just don't know what to do." He gave me some terrific wisdom from the story of the, about, uh, of the birth of Jesus. After Jesus was born, when Herod wanted to kill. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 3, it says that when the wise men had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for God, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. The angel said, stay there till I tell you something else. And John said to me, he said, if God hasn't told you something else, you stay where you are. That's wisdom. That's, see, so often we can move ahead of God. It's like, well, I'm asking God what to do. I'm getting nothing, so here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, good luck as you screw up. When Herod died, the angel came back and said to them, it's good now, you can go back to Nazareth. When you don't know what to do, you stand still. Now, a little bit of pressure began to build on me because I started getting phone calls saying, 
Okay, so are you going to come or not? But here's what I want to tell you today. Don't let others dump their urgency on you. I'll say that again because that's smart. Don't let others dump their urgency on you. In Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 17, it says, King Zedekiah uh, sent for Jeremiah the prophet, had him brought to the palace where he asked him privately, is there any word from the Lord? Yes, Jeremiah said, you'll be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon. <laughs> Uh, is, is God got anything to tell me? Yeah, you're dead. But that's still a good question in the right context. Is there any word from the Lord? Over the next several months, God did begin to speak to me in different ways. Now, please don't get me wrong because I'm not the spooky, freaky, airy, fairy. God talked to me and here's what he said. That's not me, right? But it became clear that God was guiding me in several different ways. And I'm going to mention these because it might help some of you today that are looking for the word from the Lord that shows you what to do. The, the first was God spoke to me through Scripture. I, I was reading the Bible one day and I read, I, I read a verse in John's Gospel chapter 4 and verse 38 where Jesus said to his disciples, I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. And I read that and I thought, that's just like this invitation to go to Long Island. I'm going to reap, but I haven't done the groundwork. Others have done that. And I read that and I thought, that's interesting. And I left it. And I got a phone call a few days later saying, well, what do you think? Are you going to be coming? And I said, I, I, I don't know. And, and then, then I was asked, well, well, hasn't God said anything to you? No, not really. Well, but is, haven't you read anything in God's Word that's spoken to you? I said, well, I read this in John 4, 38, but I'm not sure. Now, some of you may say, Roger, aren't you a bit slow? And I tell you this, if you're going to make a major decision in your life, be as slow as you need to be. Because you've got to get it as right as you possibly can. The other, you know, one of the other things I was juggling was, was that here I was pastoring a church that I planted in Scotland, um, happy there, loving the people, plans for the future. Uh, we had bought property. We'd got drawings drawn up to build a building of our own there. We were all ready to go. And it's like, you know what? I, I, I got stuff to do here still. I couldn't get over that. I couldn't get beyond that until a friend of mine said to me one day when I talked to him about this, he said, Roger, you'll always have more things to do because that's how God wired you. You're always looking forward. The day you die, there will be things you didn't get to yet. You don't always complete everything. Sometimes others complete it. That spoke to me. And then God spoke to me supernaturally. No other way to describe this. I was in India. I was in Mumbai, and I was in a pastor's house, and uh, there was a small group of us, and he said, it was a Saturday evening, he said, a few folks generally come around for prayer on Saturday night, and um, do you want to join us? Actually, I felt sick that night. I'd eaten something that had really upset me. I felt awful, and the last thing I wanted to do was be in a prayer meeting. But sometimes you just smile and lie. And I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to join you for prayer. No, I wouldn't. And so there was a circle of us in, in, in their apartment. And, and as we're kind of praying there, I'm feeling sorry for myself because I'm sick. I really don't want to be in this prayer meeting. And kind of, I guess, just my badness came out. And I kind of said to God, this would be a great time to talk to me about New York. And those words had hardly gone through my mind when the pastor said, I think God wants to say this to somebody here today. I've set an open door before you, 
And as you go through that door, you'll find the fulfillment of your ministry. Because I'm sending you to reap what you didn't work for. Others have done the hard work, and you'll reap the benefits of their labors. And when he finished that, I just said, oh, that's interesting. Did I tell you I'm slow? It was a huge decision. And so I get back home and I share this with my wife and she said, it looks like things are really getting clearer. I said, I still don't feel free to say yes. And I thought about the church and the people that I was pastoring and caring for. Like, you know, I, I'm committed to this people, to this place. And something happened. Sometimes God speaks to us through circumstances. And something happened in the country that impacted me. It was as simple as this. Margaret Thatcher resigned as prime minister. Now, I think Margaret Thatcher is the greatest British prime minister after Winston Churchill. She's an amazing leader. And what I noticed was when Thatcher stepped down, her replacement stepped up, and guess what? The country went on. And God used that to say to me, hey, Rog, you may be a little bit larger than life within the, the church context, but guess what? Once you're out, others step up, and they're going to be okay. So long story short, I listened for God. And ultimately, still believing we would leave our children in the UK, we said we feel this is what God wants us to do. Listen for God. And take your time listening for God. And when you have important decisions to make, make sure you don't jump ahead of having a sense of inner peace that this is what God wants. Listen for God. The second thing I learned in this transition and over my first years here on Long Island was this. You can't shock God. You can't shock God. Because actually, once we made the transition, arrived in the summer of 1991 with basically our worldly possessions and green cards and came to, came to Long Island, um, I was trying to tie this part of my journey in with a Bible character. Um, I was thinking about Joseph who dreamed of being a ruler and God gave him that dream, but he ended up beaten by his brothers, left in a pit, sold as a slave, and falsely imprisoned for attempted rape for 13 years. But I thought that might be a bit too melodramatic. But we did arrive here and find everything actually changed. There's a great, there's a great verse in the Bible that says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. I want to just take that this morning and to tell you this. Be not deceived, God is not shocked. God is never shocked. There has never been a moment when God was sitting on his throne in heaven and was kind of with his head in his hands thinking, I never saw that coming. Right? It's like, oh, oh man, what do I do now? I, that came out of left field. Nothing ever came out of left field for God. Nothing ever surprised God. Nothing ever shocked God. In fact, if your life takes a turn that you do not expect, God knew it was going to take that turn, and God is as much with you as you go down that avenue as he was when things were plain sailing. And he's still got a good plan for your life. God knew where Joseph was. And God allowed it to be part of his story. So we arrived here on Long Island. We're very well received. We took a few days to settle in. Uh, on the Wednesday morning, we had our first staff meeting. The pastor who was leaving had you know, said, we'll just take a, a little bit of time to readjust to me easing out, you easing in. So we had a meeting with the church staff, and um, we sat around, and, and he said, now, um, great to have Roger here on board now. Uh, Roger, your title will be associate pastor. Okay, you can't shock God, but you can shock Roger. Uh, okay. So I sat and I listened patiently. 
And here's the thing. I visited that church a number of times. I got to meet and to know so many of the folks. Love the people. And I don't mean any disrespect here, but, but it wasn't my style of church totally. Okay, we've all got our style of church, right? I mean, if you, you know, so, some folks switch on and watch us here at Genesis like for, for about 60 seconds and then turn off. It's like, I don't think so. And that's fine. That's fine. I like peanut butter ice cream. You don't have to. Just don't take mine. But we were all different. So you find the style of church that works for you. That wasn't my style, but coming in to be the senior pastor there, I was fully aware of the fact that what I would do over a period of time is I would start to turn things around gradually and just to reshape it a little. But it didn't happen. And what actually happened was I was now the associate pastor in a church that really wasn't totally a, my flavor. It wasn't my ideal. But you know what? God sent us there. God wanted us there. And so I stayed there. Because you can't shock God. It, it took me just a little bit of time to get over it. And, and you know, to get over all the personal. I say, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I've been a pastor for 21 years now. I've been a senior pastor since I started at 20 years of age. I, you know, I, 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 I'm really not an associate pastor. Now, once your own pride, is, you know, once you deal with that issue as one issue, and you recognize this is where God wants us. Listen, folks, none of our lives ever go the way we thought they would go. And if you're watching now and you say, mine did, please type that into the comments as you're watching on Facebook so we have physical evidence that you lied in church. <laughs> none of our lives ever went the way. We intended. Here's what the Bible says. It says the righteous person faces many troubles. But here's what it also says. But the Lord delivers him. Sorry, let me read it in the translation I'm using. But the Lord comes to the rescue every time. The righteous faces person faces many troubles. Life never goes the way we want it. But I want to tell you this. Life always goes the way God's going to know it's God knows it's going to go, and the outcome is always going to be the outcome that God planned that it would be. Sometimes we get discouraged and disillusioned. We, we, we get perhaps almost like David in Psalm 73, where he said this. He said, I've been stupid to play by the rules. What has it gotten me? A long run of bad luck. That's what, a slap in the face every time I walk out of the door. Ever been there? I have. But the fact is, in the most difficult of times, in the most confusing of times, God is still with us, and God is still working out His purposes. You know, when Joseph had all those things happen to him, like God had said to him, you're going to be the one your brothers bow down to, and he ends up like in, in an awful kind of situation. He ends up ultimately in jail in a foreign country. But here's what it says in Genesis 39, verse 21. It says, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. But the Lord was with him. You know what Joseph did in the prison? He did his best. When your life doesn't go the way you think your life ought to be going, you take a look at where you are, and you take a look at what you can do, and you do your very best with what you have where you are now. Because where you are is not an accident. It is not a mistake. It may not be what you expected, but it is still part of God's overall plan. And instead of sitting around having a pity party saying, hey, 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 I, I, I got, you know, things turned out here. They weren't the way they said they were going to be. And I'm in this situation now. I wouldn't really want to be in this situation. I didn't do that. I started to just to say, okay, what do you want me to do? Where can I, where can I serve? What can I be involved with? And, and there followed some years that were, um, had their challenges, but actually, um, I loved because I was asked, amongst other things, to focus on one area that is a passion of mine, and that is the church had basically no missions, outreaches, and programs. 
And uh, what I did was I started to sow. I started to sow the whole concept of a wider vision, of a worldwide vision. And I started preaching about our responsibility to those outside. And we started looking at opportunities to take missions teams in different places. And um, the last year that I was involved with missions there, we had 100 people who went on missions teams to countries absolutely all over the place. And I met some wonderful people. And I established some terrific relationships. And God bless them, there are people who are part of Genesis today that I first met when I first visited that church back in the late 80s. Can you imagine 30 years for, with me as their pastor? And they are still virtually sane. That is fantastic. Wonderful friendships, wonderful relationships with people who share vision. When you end up someplace you never expected to be, you put your heart and soul into serving God right where you are. You don't have a pity party and fight to get your own way. You rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him because you can't shock God. And then finally, let me follow on that with this statement. You can't shock God, but you'll never understand God. And I'll never understand God too. Just when we think we've got it all kind of squared out and we've got it all very clear before us, suddenly things change, suddenly things turn around, and, and we're, we're in a position where we, we, we really didn't foresee ourselves being. But the fact is God's still working the master plan. You see... If I had never been through the experience of seven years in that church, we would never have been here today. But that was the beginning. It was the beginning of forming relationships. It was the beginning of understanding a different culture. I had visited the United States so many times before we came to visit. So I said to people, it'll be really straightforward just going and living there. I know the States. This is a foreign country, people. And then every part, because it's such a vast country, basically every part of the country has got its own culture. So there were seven years where I got to really get to know and to acquaint myself with and to understand the culture and to understand the church culture. And what I came to realize, it, it, it's almost like, and I'm not, the parallel is a wonderful one, but in the years even that Joseph went through difficulty, God was still preparing him for what was going to come next. And during those years, which had some incredible blessings and wonderful times, the, the fact is that God was still preparing me for this because the one thing my heart yearned for from the day I found Jesus for myself was I wanted other people to come to know Jesus Christ. And the one thing I desperately wanted to be part of as a pastor is I want to be part of a church where people find Jesus. And one of the things those seven years helped me to realize was what a need there was around this island that we are physically located on for people uh, to be able to come into a church setting where there is no judgment, where there, there are no preconditions, where there is no pretense, uh, and, and just to be able to be accepted and loved and welcomed for who they are. And as that period in my life and ministry came towards an end, a whole new chapter opened up, which ultimately has brought us to where we are today and to the most exciting and loving and wonderful church that I have ever known in 49 years and 51 weeks of pastoring. What should you do when you're struggling for direction in your life? Wait for God. What do you do when everything kind of goes belly up and is not the way you expected it to do? Realize that God is not shocked. He's still with you. He saw this coming. And then rest in this fact. You won't understand God. But a million times in your life, you'll just look heavenward and say, 
That was you, wasn't it? That was you. God is with us. God is for us every step of the way. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the fact that you are the one who leads us, who has preordained our steps and our path, and who has a purpose that is unique for every single one of us. And God, I pray especially for those that are struggling today. I pray for those that are looking for direction. God, give them patience and open ears, I pray. And for those who are battling because things haven't turned out the way they thought they were going to turn out, God, help them to trust you, I pray, and to realize that you have everything in your control and that your plans for us are good. God, you are good, and we thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. the truth.
bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll see you next time.